this video, I'm going to show you some upgrades I've done to my custom built PC. Now, the first thing you're obviously going to notice is that I've put the machine in a completely different case. Now, this case originally belonged to a Monarch Hornet Pro computer system, which was actually a high end uh, portable gaming machine from about 2004. Um, as you can see, the original specs were an AMD Athlon 64X2 CPU and probably some sort of ASUS motherboard. But obviously, uh, those parts are no longer installed, and I have my current uh, Sandy Bridge based system installed. So I'm going to go ahead and open it, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you the rest of the upgrades I've done to the machine. So, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so here's the inside of the machine, and you, right away you can see uh, the CPU heatsink. Now, I've actually, since I made my first video on this machine, I have done quite a few internal upgrades, uh, as well as the new case. So, the main upgrade I've done to this machine is I've replaced the CPU, which was originally an Intel Pentium G20, or no, it, it was a G630 CPU. And I've replaced that with an Intel Core i3-2120 CPU. Now, while that's not the best upgrade in the world, uh, it does give me a little bit more performance because it does uh, support hyper-threading as well as being dual-core, so that adds a, a little bit of performance. But uh, the Core i3 just runs quite a bit better than the Pentium did, which is to be expected. I will, however, probably upgrade... Uh, this machine to a Core i5 or Core i7 at some point. And if I do upgrade it to an i7, it would probably mean ditching this case if I can't fit a big enough core in there. But for now, it works just fine, and this case is really, really cool. So, uh, the only downside to this case that I've experienced so far is the power supply. Now, the power supply in this case is, as you can see from the back, it's a slightly smaller size than a standard ATX form factor power supply. Uh, this is actually a micro ATX form factor uh, power supply, and uh, it's the only size that will fit in this case, because a standard ATX power supply is too big. However, I may be able to jerry-rig one in there. I may try that at some point, but for now, this one works okay. The only issue I have with this power supply is that the fans, the uh, f there's one fan there, and then there's one in the back of the power supply, which you may be able to make out right there. Uh, they just run at really high RPMs for some reason, and it makes it quite loud. So, at some point, I'm probably just going to get a new power supply for it. Probably one with a big fan on the bottom instead of two small fans on the sides. So, that should make the noise a lot less in this machine. So... Uh, another upgrade I've done, which you can't really see through here, is uh, right in there. So let me see if I can get it out. You may be able to make out what that is back there, but it is a Samsung 850 Evo SSD. And that uh, includes both, or that is where both my Mac OS X uh, Mountain Lion and Windows 7 partitions are stored on. So that makes... Uh, loading times extremely quick. Uh, the final upgrade I've done to this machine is on the other side, if we turn it around. So you can see here, uh, I have a new graphics card installed. And yes, I know this machine is quite dusty. I've been using it for quite a long time, actually, so I will be cleaning it out pretty soon. But uh, here is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card. Now, I actually got a pretty good deal on this off eBay a couple years ago, or about a year ago, I think it was. Uh, I only paid about $40 for it, I think. So, I'm pretty sure that that was a decent deal for that card. Uh, and it does increase the performance of the machine a very good amount. Uh, it's definitely much better than the GT520 card I had in here uh, originally. So, that's the uh, upgrades I've done to the machine. So... Let me just go ahead and hook it up and boot it up and I'll show you it. So I'll be right back. Alright, so before I hook it up, I thought I'd show you the back of the machine. So uh, up here you can see we have the power supply. And actually when I got this case, there were three small fans uh, here, 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 and here. 
but they were extremely loud so I just went ahead and removed them. Uh, this machine runs cool enough where those aren't needed at all so uh, yeah that wasn't any loss to the cooling of the system. So under there you can see my motherboard. Uh, this is once again an Intel DP67DE board. Uh, it's a pretty low end board but I got a really good deal on it off eBay so uh, and it works perfectly fine for what I use it for. Uh, so right here you can see the graphics card. Uh, see if we can get that in better light. There we go. Uh, it has a one single link DVI, a micro HDMI port you can see up there. And that might be, yeah, that's micro HDMI, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then on the bottom there you can see we have a DVD, DVI dual link port. So uh, yeah, that's the back of the machine. And the motherboard actually comes out in a pretty cool way. You basically unscrew uh, these four thumb screws and the entire motherboard tray just slides out. Now, of course, you have to unplug everything before you do it, but it is quite a cool and easy method to uh, upgrading uh, your expansion cards or uh, your motherboard. So, yeah, that is, uh, I, th I mean, this case is pretty small, but it is quite a good case, and I do like it. Once I replace this power supply with its loud fans, uh, this machine will be perfect. So let me go ahead and hook it up and I'll show you around the system. Alright, so I've got my machine hooked up, so let me just go ahead and power it on. You can hear those power supply fans are quite loud. Uh, so on the front of the case here, you can see we also have some temperature sensors. Now, I put the top uh, probe like just inside the case, touching some metal, and that'll give me my ambient case temperature. And then the bottom temperature probe I put in between the fins of the CPU heatsink, so that gives you a an accurate representation of what the CPU heatsink temperature is, which is actually pretty cool. Now, as you can see uh, on the bottom, we have two audio ports and audio output and audio input as well as two U or actually four uh, USB 2.0 ports so that's pretty cool. Uh, the machine is now booted it's booted into OS 10 so I'm gonna go ahead and log into that real quick. So we have it right here. Alright, so as you can see, it's now logged in. Uh, let's go ahead into about this Mac. You can see here that it is detected still as an, or actually I think before the CPU upgrade it was detected as a Mac Pro, but it is now detected as a 21.5 inch mid-2011 iMac. You can see it has a 3.3 gigahertz uh, uh, Intel Core i3 CPU. Uh, 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM, which is actually running at 1333 megahertz because this is, of course, the Sandy Bridge interface. Uh, you can see there that it also detects and fully uses the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card. So I'll go ahead and just show you the performance of the card using like Launchpad or something. You can see that uh, the animations are quite smooth and not laggy at all. So. Yeah, you can see the folder animation is perfectly fine. And yeah, overall the machine just runs perfectly fine. Now the only downside to using the Core i3 CPU is that uh, the uh, editing video on this machine is not uh, very quick to export. So that is the main reason I really want to upgrade the CPU. Other than that though, it seems to work uh, perfectly fine and is pretty fast too. So I'll just go ahead and boot into Windows and show you how fast that boots. Go ahead and restart. It does take quite a bit of time to load up the BIOS in this machine. So I'll just go ahead and select Windows 7 here and boot it up. See, it boots up extremely quickly. And now we are in the OS. So I'll just go ahead and to uh, pull it out real quick. Let's go ahead into the computer properties. 
Uh, you can see it now gets a 7.1 on the Windows Experience Index. Uh, it, of course, detects the Core i3 CPU and the 8 gigs of RAM. So, of course, the slowest uh, or the lowest scoring uh, piece of hardware in the system is the CPU, which gets a 7.1. The RAM gets a 7.5. And the graphics get a 7.4. And, of course, the SSD gets a 7.9 because it is very quick. So, overall, I really like the system now that I've done the upgrades to it. And it runs perfectly fine and serves me perfectly well as my main machine. So, yeah. Uh, those are the upgrades to my custom-built PC. So, hope you enjoyed this video.